Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here. Hi, my name is Lexi, and today we're gonna to be continuing Queen Charlotte, A Bridgerton Story, episode four, Holding the King. Last episode was very eventful on many different categories, I should say. <laughs> In the beginning, it seemed like King George and Charlotte had this a love-hate relationship where they didn't like each other at first and so it was like every other day and every other day they make an arrangement to just do their marital duties if you know what I mean um, but it slowly started to reveal that this hate that they have is actually love for each other or at least um, if it's not if it wasn't love it would might have been just at least they are attracted to each other and very lustful and there was a lot of scenes that I know I seemed kind of uncomfortable in them, <laughs> but I really do like this kind of stuff. It, it was, um, I think, I think it's one thing if I was watching it alone, I'd be like, yes, like <laughs> I'd be all up for it, you know, but the fact that I have to like react <laughs> to that stuff <laughs> on camera is just a different story <laughs> or watch that kind of stuff on camera is just like a different story. But, um, yeah, that's why I was getting kind of shy <laughs> with it. But yeah, that was happening and then it started to envelop into them actually wanting to have a committed, like, normal marriage relationship. They weren't at each other's throats anymore. Um, and it seemed great until near the end of the episode, uh, Charlotte woke up, didn't know where King George was, or King George woke up first and stripped completely naked, or he already was completely naked, and... Was he completely naked or did he have a shirt over? So he had like no pants, but he was going through kind of like, is it mania? Like a manic episode or I don't know what kind of um, mental illness he has, but something happened to him and he was really, really confused, not conscious, not in his right mind and walked out into the gardens and started like screaming for Venus up in the sky his servant tried to bring him back inside, back inside, but it, he just wasn't having it. Charlotte uh, ended up being able to convince him to come back inside, and we're kind of left off there. Yeah, I don't think his, I don't think King George's mother even knows about this. Maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. But now we know why King George was trying to push Charlotte away from him as much as possible, and it's because of this mental illness that he has that he's trying to deal with, and. That's why, I mean, obviously in such a huge position of power that he's in, of course he's not going to want anyone to know about this other than like the ones that are with him 24-7 at his side. And so, yeah, it, I mean, obviously it's inevitable that people are going to find out. At first, I completely like did not put two and two together. I, I thought like maybe at his old age, Prince George got dementia or something and that's what they were dealing with in Bridgerton like in the Bridgerton series and everything I did not put two and two together or even think that he was dealing with all these mental issues or mental illness way early in his life like this at what 20 21 years old 22 years old um so that's really really scary now I know I thought maybe he was like going through a different type of sickness that was possibly um wife threatening and that's what he was trying to hide from charlotte but no it is it is the same uh mental illness that he has in present time which <laughs> i can't can't believe i didn't put two and two together maybe i'm just like so immersed in the love story i just can't think critically <laughs> when i watch the show and like um all of the lovey-dovey scenes <laughs> happening it just like fills my head with fluff and i can't think uh which you know what that's fine i love entertainment i love this um, I'm it's definitely a break from watching so many violent, gory shows on the channel that I am right now, so it's fun. I'm, I'm really enjoying this, and I can't wait to get into episode four to figure out how Charlotte is going to have to deal with this. Um, when King George is in a right state of mind, what's, what's he gonna re how is he gonna react to all of this? So yeah, I'm excited to jump into it. But before we do, make sure to give this video a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on videos like this one. It would mean the absolute world to me if you could be a part of making this channel grow. And if you want to watch this video full length unedited, as well as early access to more Queen Charlotte episodes, my Patreon link is in the description below, so definitely check that out, tiers two and three. 
And without further ado, let's jump into Queen Charlotte, A Bridgerton Story, Episode 4, Holding the King. For instance, I just pulled the king <gasps> out of a hole in the vegetable garden where he was busy discoursing with the sky. Is that usual? Whoa, he's still, like, not okay. Mind of his own. Cuts his own trail now and then, but nothing better for driving a plow. Ooh, we get to see the origins of this. It is the Dowager Princess you are needed at the palace. Tell her I'm busy in a field. I'm afraid she insists. <laughs> Let us get on with the thing, then. The thing where you enumerate the many meritorious qualities of some chosen noblewoman, and I remind you how uninterested I am in the qualities of noblewomen. <laughs> Great, and you produce an heir. Our family's position weakens. Now I ask, is that all a king is? Tell me, what would the people prefer? A royal baby or cheap bread? Right now, they have neither. Ooh. The war has drained our coffers. Now the American colonies threaten to withhold taxes and Parliament revolts. The people need a king. Mm, a real yeah. king. Okay. So, I have found you a queen. Sophia Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz She is on a ship. A ship? Now? Bound for London. Oh. The betrothal contracts are signed. Cornered him. She will lose the... Moon. Lose the moon, your majesty? Uh, Withdraw! You heard her. Not only the moon, one now. Pollock's now. lost. Regulus lost. Pollock's lost. Oh. Regulus lost. And, oh. <laughs> oh no! Okay, his mom does know then about what's going on. Has he been dealing with this his whole life and it's just like getting worse and worse? Now that's what I'm Simpsons thinking it is. Remain. Your Highness, I implore you, diet is the key. Enough. We've entertained all your theories and that hideous treatment. Now it is a week before his wedding. We need new theories. Indeed, Your Highness, it may be time to consider what none of your physicians have dared. That the king's condition is not merely physical, but nervous. Merely suffering a disorganization of the nerves. Okay. This organization I have devoted my career to curing. Oh? Oh, are we gonna get like medieval experiments and stuff? Simply talking to him. Talking? Huh. Are we to believe therapy can be cured with one's voice? It depends on the voice. What? Are these real practices in medicine? Boy. Or it used to be? Remember yourself. You are the king of England. You command an entire kingdom. You can command yourself, too. Are you fit to marry, George? I am. What? <laughs> this man really just said, I spent years of studying. Mind over matter, baby. Let's go. <laughs> It's cool that we get to see his point of view on everything. Bright is missing. <laughs> oh, he overheard all of that. He's trying to get outside to compose himself again. If your bride is missing, it is your responsibility to remedy that. Probably for the best. It was uh, premature, all this. I'm not ready, not right. I have examined you thoroughly and you are perfectly right. Do I look perfectly right to you? Is that- You are perfectly right. What? <gasps> Wait, no. He, he is right. Whoa. I forgot myself. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> I feel like this is not the best treatment, but hey, if it's working right now, it's working, right? Oh, so he is trying to look for her now. He just waves. <laughs> oh, wow, we're gonna see his point of view on everything. He's like... He's like a bottle or a jar or bucket of water and it's just like so close from just bursting on, and just man. spilling out. Just I did not know a woman could be so beautiful. 
Perhaps is she dull? She is terrifyingly clever. That is the problem. <laughs> she will argue word, though. I'm Her perfection is matched only by my deformity. She belongs as far from me as she can get. Will your majesty not be returning to Buckingham House? Then? I have done as they asked. I married. Now I shall leave her alone. Safe from me. Oh, man. Pushing her away. The way he talks about her, though. Have you guys noticed, like, the dialogue he uses to talk about her is so... Yes, your majesty. May I say our destination? We are going to see my husband. Well, your majesty, it is just that this particular circumstance is rather... <laughs> the queen is coming. What? Why would you... <laughs> no one would your majesty. She just appeared. Good God. <laughs> Good God. Where is he? Your majesty, we were not expecting... Where is he? <laughs> the observatory, your majesty. She is steadfast. I love it. You do not understand because this is who you were born to be. I cannot do whatever I like. This is very interesting to see this unfold now from his point of view and like what he's trying to do, like basically trying to protect her. I do not want to fight with you. I want to fight with you. Fight with me. Fight for me. Go home, Charlotte. Okay, what is he gonna do now? I am near at hand for whenever your majesty feels a fit coming up. But the thing is, that is not enough. If the queen were to ever see me like that, if she were to flee from me, God forbid, if I were to hurt her, surely there must be something that you can do. Wow. Something He's actually trying to get back to her? Forever. He's I making an effort. I have been experimenting with something more proactive. Please. I want to be well. Uh -oh. I would require rooms in the palace, full access to your majesty at any time, and license to pursue more extreme measures. Anything. Whatever you have to do, we have the time and privacy of my honeymoon. Wait, so this really is going to be like a Frankenstein situation? We require solitude. You are dismissed. What is going on? Brimsley's boyfriend is not... Like in Luxury. this. Never known the salubrious powers of Spartan habits. <laughs> Me after a basketball game. Porridge. You have never learned to submit. Ooh. This is weird. This guy's treatment isn't just like trying to fix and solve the problem immediately. He's like working backwards to make his entire lifestyle and way of thinking completely different. It's very interesting to think about. Oh my god. <gasps> no! That is the origin of your fits. Don't bring dogs into this. Submission! Shock therapy? Or what is just torture? Do you understand me, boy? Don't give a damn who your father was, how many titles you have, or whether you are God's own representative on Earth. In here, you are just another animal in a cage. Just like an animal, I will break you! This is gonna make him more mad. This is gonna make him way worse. This is what he's been going through this entire time. See, boy, animal nature is clay. With enough strength, you can mold it. I will do to you what the Germans did to their wolves. What would you have the king do? A gesture? A gesture. A gesture. With respect, your majesty is his majesty. His majesty could be with her right now. I yeah. can't take the risk. Especially with a woman so unpredictable. So <laughs> capricious. Could you believe her the other night? Abandoning her honeymoon chambers in violation of all custom and decorum, not to mention my direct order. <laughs> bursting you love it. As as I am. Like that is too dangerous for a man like me. <laughs> Maybe a perfect match. Yep, I like this perspective. I cannot, I cannot be with her. <sighs> Perhaps I could be near her. Hmm. Ooh. The difference in colors between Queen Charlotte's perspective and his too is pretty cool. His is like navy blues, grays, dark. Uh, blacks and grays and everything. And then when we look at her, it's just so vibrant and colorful. She is mad. <laughs> I believe she is lonely, Your Majesty. She may miss her husband. Yeah. I think I miss her too. 
<laughs> it might just be Mike by the Queen. Brimsley. A gesture. A gesture. Some token, some sign that she is not really alone. What hours does the doctor keep in his laboratory? Does your majesty require his attention? He's gonna steal the Pomeranian that was in the cage. So it was his idea to give her a dog. That's cool. <laughs> he needs to set free all the dogs. Oh, The whimper. They always make dogs whimper. From my cage to hers. I want the queen to know we will not be caged forever. Oh, he really does care. <laughs> and she has no idea what he's been through to get that for get that to her. My dog is missing. <laughs> and the stupid beast nowhere to be found. <laughs> it may be that the beast is not so stupid. That dog or wolf. Soon enough. An animal tires of its cage. Do you agree, Doctor? Mm. Your Majesty has been spending too much time in the observatory. I worry another fit may be imminent. The Dowager Princess has asked me to convey a message to Your Majesty. <laughs> Come to me. I, Your Majesty, news from Buckingham House. The Queen has received your gesture. And what did she think of it? <laughs> she called it a deformed bunny. <laughs> <laughs> he finds that funny. Oh, no. that is so cute. Sorry, Doctor. Today I would rather work on my farm. Ooh. Though I don't know if that's going to help his mental health, but we'll see. I like this King George. I like that he likes to farm and do all this work. It's cool. I'm afraid that my larder may not rate with your majesty's usual fare, but I could run and fetch a crust of bread or, or some stew. I think I shall dine with my wife. There we go. Look at him. And now hearing his apology to her after all of this, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Patiently waiting. Oh. He's straying away from the treatments. Treatments. <laughs> oh. Seems like no one's paying attention though. That's good. Come on, overcome, overcome. Nice. Good. Okay, okay controlled himself good is it all right if i join you for a meal this evening a meal a meal <laughs> charlotte stop walking this instant <sighs> you have no reason to trust me i marry you and then i disappear into my observatory but if you will give me just one evening of your time allow me to show you where my mind has been Ooh, the doctor not now doctor i'm busy moving moving to buckingham house Without consulting me. I have instructed the men to find you quarters there. Though I am afraid our consultations may become rather less frequent. Alas. But such a change could have disastrous consequences for your Doctor, I feel healthier than I have in years. Uh, not saying that that guy's experiments are, like, good for his health. But, I don't know. This is crazy. You told me to charm her to make it easier for the crown. I have done my best. You told me I could not let her know me because I must protect the secrets of the crown. I have mm. not. You told me to bed her. I have done so. It has been abundantly clear since my first breath that I was born for the happiness or misery of a great nation and consequently must often act contrary to my passions. Shall I send for the doctor, Your Majesty? Yes, yes. Get him here. Charlotte. She will never know of it. The dialogue now just hits so hard. Yep, now we're catching up to the present time. You I saw a doctor the other day in the cellar. <laughs> Coronation day. <gasps> no more even days and odd days. Sorry, we cannot better accommodate you. Cannot risk the queen learning of you. Since you moved here, you have not been to the chair. We do not resume treatment soon. We risk losing everything we have accomplished. 
The methods have done more for me than you and your chair ever could. <gasps> your Majesty forgets himself. You grow reckless. You give free rein to your most capricious urges. So does she. My entire life in terror of acting incorrectly because every incorrect action threatened the ruin of England. The terror nearly broke me. Now, I have met a woman who is never terrified. She <laughs> does as she pleases. Oh. Rules, and she is the most royal person I've ever known. I love him. I know he's crazy, but ugh, the way he talks about her is just insane, dude. Right, the ball. I forgot about that. Danbury threw a ball at her place. First one of the season. You can do anything. With you by my side, I think I can. <sighs> and then, yeah. <sighs> Wonder what triggered it. Unfortunately, I'm not free for treatment just now. Perhaps I failed to speak clearly before. You will never treat me again. You are no longer my doctor. No. Nevertheless, I remain the Queen's. The Queen's? What? Yeah. But why would she need a doctor? Well, because obviously she is with child. She was not sure, but I am. Congratulations, Your Majesty. A joyous day for England. Oh, sh that's what triggers it. And then he's going to keep, he's going to go back to the doctor for more treatments, isn't he? It's overwhelming information just all at once like that. Yeah, oh god, he's overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh. Schizophrenia? I heard, I'm hearing voices. It's like he's ticking too. What is this? What is happening? <sighs> Even Brimsley is shook. Oh. Does he remember that what the doctor told him about her? Was that Charlotte? Is she leaving him? Oh no. Your Majesty. Brimsley, stop following me. <laughs> I beg you. Brimsley, stop! Brimsley didn't do anything. He didn't even know. <laughs> ah, Charlotte. I did not expect you. The Danbury ball was a trial. Has your highness ever tried cutting English mutton with a dull knife? Surely a coincidence too that the very same day the windows were sealed shut on the upper floors and suddenly locks everywhere. Locks on the army, <sighs> the kitchen. Uh... What I could not quite convince myself was a coincidence though, was when the library set of Shakespeare was suddenly missing King Lear. Forgive me, I am not a Shakespeare enthusiast. The one about the mad king, <laughs> because the king is mad and I live in a mad house. That somehow I was deficient when he... The king is not mad. The king is merely exhausted from holding the greatest nation in the world on a shoulder. Oh gosh, this is intense. The weight on his mother as she watches her son start to crack. Yeah. If you would do anything to stop the cracking. You would engage hideous doctors and a thousand disgusting treatments. You would scour Europe for a queen grateful enough to aid him. If necessary, you would leave the rough edges of his nature for his bride to discover in due course. Rough edges he was talking to the sky oh is he listening into all of this but if i must have one if i must leave my home my family my language my life it cannot be for a man i do not know the man yeah. i was not allowed to know <laughs> I mean, I understand why he kept it under wraps. I really do. But the treatment. Tail between his legs. Uh... 
All right, you guys, that was episode four of Queen Charlotte. <sighs> King George's secret's out. <laughs> and Charlotte is not too happy about being in the dark of all of that, but I understand, I do understand King George's perspective on this. Not only that, not only that, we got to see in this whole episode King George's perspective and where he was at and the motives for his actions and everything. From the very moment of marrying Charlotte and what she had to go through, we got to see what what he, his perspective, what he was going through during all of that as well. He first, obviously he's doing like these crazy treatments to um, get his sanity back. And at first he's like pushing Charlotte away and do doesn't want to risk the chance of her finding out about all of this. And then it turned into like, man, I really want to be with her. She's like perfect. <laughs> She's nothing that I imagined like any woman could be, blah, blah, blah. So then it turned to trying to get better as soon as possible so he can be with her. And as they, he started to fall more and more in love with Charlotte, he started to think that she was the cure to what's happening with him. And, and slowly stopped the treatments altogether with the doctor, which I don't know if these treatments are good for him at all. I really don't, but it seemed to be working-ish compared to stopping it altogether and just trying to live a normal King's day-to-day, -day, I guess. Not a normal life, but... In, um, going back to way the way things were and it and he ended up snapping and yeah like i said charlotte is not too happy about it so he wanted to stop the treatments but after seeing her reaction to what happened now that everything now that the air is completely cleared he went back to the doctor tail between his legs and he's going to continue the treatment which based on present day in Bridgerton, in the Bridgerton series, doesn't help very much, does it? So we'll have to see how this goes. And also the hard conversation between Charlotte and George after all of this, we'll have to see what that's all about or how that is going to go. <laughs> um, and also the side story between Brimsley and the servant to the king, I can't remember his name, because Brimsley didn't know about the king either. So we'll have to see what that conversation is gonna be about. <laughs> with their side story. And I want to see the king in present day again. I want to see how he's doing or like what he's dealing with now. So I hope it, I, I hope in this next episode, it jumps back into present day again. Cause I want to see where his mind is there. I remember like, ugh, it's been so long since like season one of Bridgerton. I'm pretty sure we saw him for like 10 minutes. Uh, and he like, he was completely gone, I believe. I think he recognized Charlotte, but recognized her from like when they were very young, like during this time, I believe, but I can't remember. Uh, so yeah, I want to see more of like we see more of present day Queen Charlotte. I want to see more of present day Queen King George, if that's possible in the series. But yeah, this episode was intense. It was interesting because we got to see King George's side, but um, it makes me just as excited to get into episode five. So I'm going to end the video here. Uh, if you like this reaction, please give this video a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on videos like this one. It would mean the absolute world to me if you'd be part in making this channel grow. And if you want to watch this video full length unedited, as well as early access to more Queen Charlotte episodes, my Patreon link is in the description below, tiers two and three, so definitely check that out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!